Good morning. It's great to have you with us today at Northside Online. My name is Haley Harbaugh, and I'm the new children's minister here at NCC. If you haven't already heard, we are so excited to be reopening the Kids' Corner on October 4th. There will be children's programming during the 920 and 1040 service times for ages birth through fifth grade. I can't wait to meet you and your families. As we get closer to October 4th, if you would like to help serve back here in the Kids Corner, I would love to talk with you about the opportunities that we have available. All you have to do is click on the connection card link, fill one out, and make sure to check the I'm interested in serving in the Kids Corner box. If you do that, I'll be in touch with you soon. Connection cards are also a great way to share ministry needs, prayer requests, or update contact information with our ministry staff. So be sure you fill one out sometime during our service. You can also request immediate prayer by tapping the request a prayer button on your screen at any time in the service. That will open a private message where our, one of our service hosts will be able to pray with you. Finally, don't forget to share this service with your friends on social media by clicking the button in the chat. That's a great way to invite people to church today. We're ready to get started, so I want to thank you again for being here. Welcome to Northside. Thanks so much for being here this morning. It's so good to see everybody. If you are online, welcome. Please use our new uh, chat feature on our new platform and click the share button so that we can reach as, reach as many people as possible. We have so many things happening here at Northside. Today we have an informational meeting about our Israel trip in March 2022. It's happening at noon after the final service. And if you can't make it today, there's another one happening after um, the final service next week. So hopefully you can make one of those. We want to note that our Family Fall Fest is changing this year. We're going to make it a trunk or treat. That's going to be Friday, October 30th, and we need a whole bunch of volunteers. So if that's something you're interested in doing, please stop by the Connection Center and sign up and help us out. Everything I just talked about and so much more is on our app. So if you do not have the app, please get it downloaded. You can find upcoming events, sermons, all kinds of stuff. You can also connect with us during the week by texting the keywords on the screen behind me to 660-570-7989, and someone on the ministry staff will be in touch with you. Thanks again for being here. Let's stand and worship. Oh, we look to the sun, set our eyes on the Savior, see the image of love, sing His praise.
the everlasting one, Jesus our God, beyond the skies of
for this time of communion, this time of remembrance. I want to remind you that we've got some tables in the four corners of the room, and after I say the amen, you're welcome to make your way over to one of those. The bread and the juice are in cups stacked on top of each other in the trays. You can take it there at the table, or you can take it back to your seat, whatever suits you best. But let's bow our heads and let's pray for this time of communion. Heavenly Father, we just stand amazed uh, in your presence, you know, your wonderful presence, God, but we stand amazed at uh, the glory of the cross. And God, we just, we thank you that we have the opportunity to share in that glory. God, that we can share in the salvation that comes from what your son did on that cross. That we can share in the victory that comes from what your son did on that cross. And as we have this time of remembrance, God, let us not allow it to go to waste, but let us use it to recenter our lives, our thoughts, our spirits on you and who you are, a God who is willing to take the first step in the process of reconciling us to you. God, we thank you so much for what you've done. We pray in the name of Jesus.
Then through the darkness, your loving kindness tore through the shadows of my soul. The work is finished, the end is written. Jesus Christ, my living hope. Who could imagine so great a mercy? Heart could fathom such boundless grace. The God of ages stepped down from glory to Says spoken, I am for 
come to town. In the presence of Jesus' name, fear has no place. Anxiety has no place. Hopelessness has no place in the presence of Jesus' name. But in the name of Jesus, we have hope. We have peace. We have joy. That's the power of Jesus' name. So we're going to take Jesus' name and sing it over this place. We're going to fill this room with the glory of Jesus' name. Whatever your situation is, whether it's good or bad, we're going to lift it up to him because in his name is the victory. In his name alone. Come on, church, let's fill this place with the name of Jesus. Thank you, worship team. I need a second to compose myself after that. If you haven't already done so, please fill out a connection card. And while you do that, please note any prayer requests you have so that we can be praying for you. We ask that you also continue to use the website and the app to give your tithes and offering. But if you do have cash or check, there is an office drop box right out there in the foyer. It's just to the left as you leave the worship center. Here at Northside, we think it's so important to be a part of the local church, serving on a ministry team that you use your skills for, and we want to highlight one of our volunteers today. It is Michael Tyler. Give him a round of applause, please. 
He's on our tech team, and he's back there today. If you see him, please thank him for his time. He is so dedicated about giving that. We are reopening Kids Corner next Sunday. If you would like to be one of the 50 volunteers it takes to run Kids Corner, please stop by Next Steps Table after the service to get connected to that ministry team. Thanks again for being with us, guys. It's so good to see everybody. It's time to open up your app, click on this week's sermon as Sid finishes in the book of Proverbs. So how courageous are you? <clears throat> you know, 2020 has been a, a crazy, kind of scary year, and maybe you've been asking yourself that question. Uh, we need to start with a definition of courage. Maybe you uh, know this, maybe you don't. The dictionary defines courage as the ability to face and deal with a dangerous or difficult situation. The ability to face and deal with a dangerous situation. Or a difficult situation. So to face it and then to deal with it. Different folks have defined it in their own terms. The poet Carl Baker said, Courage is fear that has said its prayers. Courage is fear that has said its prayers. General George Patton defined it this way Courage is fear that holds on for one more minute. I have to think about that one. Franklin P. Jones said, Courage is the ability to not let people know how scared you are on the inside. And Captain Riddebacher said, the courage is doing what you're afraid to do. Where there is no fear, there is no courage. Interesting, isn't it, that they are flip sides of the same coin, fear and courage. So there's a battle going on with all of us. What keeps us from being courageous is to be fearful. What what defines us as being courageous is to overcome our fear. We typically think of examples of courage from the battlefield, from the military, don't we? We think of courage as the soldiers coming ashore on D-Day at Omaha Beach. We tend to think of those outnumbered survivors at the Alamo who fought against overwhelming odds to the last person. We think of the Marines landing on Iwo Jima. We think of the blue and gray battling it out at Gettysburg. But I'm going to say to you, I think far more poignant, far more powerful are the many faces of courage that you see in everyday life. If I've been thinking about that this week. This is what I think courage is. It's a family dealing with terminal cancer and yet not being defeated. It's a single mother struggling to raise her family with optimism. It's the widow who faces the last years of her life without her beloved husband by her side. It's the child of divorce struggling with self-image, with rejection, with doubt and anger. It's a single person who chooses purity over promiscuity. It's the engaged couple who waits even though the world says it's fine, everybody's doing it, go ahead. It's the employee who sees something wrong and reports it anyway. It's the mother who's facing a difficult surgery, or even more, the mother and father who are facing a surgery that their child's going to have anyway. What do all those have in common? They have four attributes, four choices that people make. Bravery in the face of danger, steadfastness in the face of op opposition, action in the face of resistance, and optimism in the face of despair. All of those can be chosen if we don't let our fears control us, our fears overwhelm us. The first choice says, I won't be afraid. The second says, I won't give up. The third says, I won't be intimidated. The fourth says, I will not lose heart. For us today, it's that battle. If we're going to choose to be courageous, which I hope all of you will do, then we have to face our fears. We have to overcome our fears. I want to give you four steps 
to facing your fears. And the basis for this message is Proverbs 28.1. That's the scripture I want you to memorize this week. That's the one I want you to really reflect on. Remember whose you are is the first step to facing your fears. That's what I think Proverbs 28.1 communicates. Remember whose you are. Proverbs 28.1 says, The wicked flee, though no one pursues, but the righteous are as bold as a lion. I love the imagery there, but you see he's dividing two types of people, the wicked and the righteous. Those who are defined by the rejection of God, those who continue to be self-centered, they are the wicked. Those who come to God and are God-centered, those who choose to live by faith, are by God credited righteousness. Righteousness is imputed to them. The people who live for God, they are as bold as a lion. So you might line it up with the wicked really are acting out of their fears or their insecurities. The righteous are courageous because they know whose they are. Scripture reaffirms that in many places. Joshua 1.6 says, be strong and courageous, because you will lead these people to inherit the land I swore to their ancestors to give them. So, it's rooted in family. The Bible says, when you choose to believe in Christ, you choose to come by faith to God, that you become part of the family of God. He is your father. You are his son or his daughter. It's out of that family identity that you can start having courage. Psalm 121, 1 and 2 says, I lift up my eyes to the mountains. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth, the Father, the creator, my maker. It begins with remembering whose you are. 2 Timothy 1, 7 says, For the spirit God gave us does not make us timid or fearful but gives us power, love, and self-discipline. So here's the thing. Here's what you want to know. Maybe you, today you're searching spiritually. Maybe you haven't made a decision about Jesus Christ. I want to encourage you to talk to me, talk to folks here, our leaders, our elders. Reach out to us on the platform, uh, wherever you are. Reach out to us and and communicate with us. We can help you to make that decision. We want to see you make that decision. What is the decision? It's believing that Jesus is the Son of God. It's confessing and repenting of your sin. It's calling on the name of the Lord to be saved. It's being baptized into Christ. And when we're baptized, we receive two promises. We receive the forgiveness of our sins, and we receive the indwelling gift of the Holy Spirit. A spirit that God gives us that does not make us timid. And here's the thing. God gives his sons and his daughters this spirit of courage. This spirit of faith. And so you have it within you. Maybe you don't choose to allow the spirit to lead you in making courageous choices, but you can. You can't change yesterday. But if you think about your life and you understand you've been living it out of fear, you've been living it out of worry, it's been paralyzed by worry, then you you can have a different future. God has given you the resources to make you an overcomer, and it is that you are a son or a daughter of God. It is that you are part of his family. He made you to be a courageous son or daughter. 1980, uh, the men's U.S. hockey team for the USA was comprised of a lot of college students and just graduated students. It was a truly amateur team, which the Olympics back then were supposed to be amateur athletes competing against one another. They're different countries. (laughs) It was unfairly situated with, in particular, hockey in hockey, many of the countries had uh, professional or people that did nothing but play hockey for a living. And the best team in the world was the U.S. Uh, excuse me, the USSR, the Soviet hockey team. Many of them uh, were commissioned in the army, but all they did was play hockey. 
they were older, and so they were vastly favored to win the gold medal. Our team made it to the semifinal round where they would face off with the USSR. And it was a true David versus Goliath sports matchup. The coach of the U.S. was named Herb Brooks. And he went in before the game and he said one thing to his team. He said, men, you were born to play this game. In other words, you were born to be hockey players. And you're born to represent your country playing hockey. And they went out and shocked the world. It's called the Miracle on Ice. They defeated the Soviet Union. And a couple days later, they played Finland and won the gold medal. I say the same to us. It might look today like you're losing. It might look today like you have ample reason for your fears to control you. But I am saying to you, you are a David in the making. You are a son or daughter of God. Remember whose you are. That's the first step. And then secondly, you confront your fears. You take on your fears. You face those fears. Remember what our proverb said, the wicked flee, though no one pursues. They really don't have a reason, but out of fear, they are cowards. But the righteous are as bold as a lion. They face their challenger. They face the difficulty. They face what's going on. That proverb is echoed by Psalm 27, 1 through 3. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is a stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? Because of the Lord, because he's on my side, because he gives me my strength and my courage, I will not be fearful. When the wicked advance against me to devour me, it is my enemies and my foes who will stumble and fall. Though an army besiege me, my heart will not fear. Though war break out against me, even then I will be confident. You can choose to be confident. Paul wrote out of a Roman jail cell to the church at Philippi. He's in prison not because he committed some vile crime, but because he refused to quit speaking out for Jesus, quit preaching Jesus. And so he writes to the Philippian church, For I know that through your prayers and God's provision of the Spirit of Jesus Christ, what has happened to me will turn out for my deliverance. I eagerly expect and hope that I will in no way be ashamed, but will have sufficient courage so that now as always Christ will be exalted in my body. In other words, the one thing he didn't want to have happen was for him to let down Jesus, to let down his heavenly Father, to be a son of God who was faithful to him. That was his greatest fear. In other words, his faith was the priority. I'm saying to you, the reason a lot of us have fears paralyzing us is because our faith is not as strong as it can be. We can choose to grow in that faith. We must choose to grow in that faith. So he can say this, as, whether by life or by death, for me to live is Christ and to die is gain. In other words, I'm not afraid to die because I know that God has a place prepared for me where there is no more pain, no more tears, no more mourning, no more death. I know that God's got my back in this life. And I have nothing to lose because if my life is taken from me, and maybe that's your greatest fear is uh, an illness or some kind of thing that is mortal. If, if, even if my life's taken from me, then God has eternity assured for me where I will go to see those people I love that have gone on before me and I'll await those I love who haven't yet crossed over. You see, Paul has... That kind of courage because of his faith. He's ready and he's able and he faces his fears head on. I encourage you to do the same thing. Remember what Philippians 4.13 says. I can do all this through him who gives me strength. I can overcome. The late 40s, Jackie Robinson was a great baseball player. 
He played in the Negro Leagues. And Branch Rickey, the general manager of the Brooklyn Dodgers, was interacting with him to try to get him to become the first black man to play Major League Baseball, to cross the color barrier, if you will. And Jackie was certainly talented enough, but he was kind of afraid, and with good reason. There was very hostile race, racial and prejudice uh, in those times. And he said to Mr. Ricky, it sounds like a dream come true, not only for me, but for my people. But there will be a lot of trouble ahead for you, for me, for my people, and for baseball. <laughs> trouble ahead. Branch Ricky rolled a phrase over his lips as though he liked the sound. You know, Jackie, I was a small boy when I took my first train ride. On that same train was an old couple who was also riding for the first time. We were going through the Rocky Mountains, up those mountains where it just fell off on either side. And then this old man was looking ahead and he said, Trouble head, Ma, we're high above the precipice and we're going to run right off it. I never hear tra train wheels to this day, said Branch Ricky to Jackie Robinson, without hearing what sounded to my boyish ears like those wheels saying of the train as they rolled over and over, trouble ahead, trouble ahead, trouble ahead. But our train course bent at the last moment, and we went through a tunnel to the other side of the mountain. That trouble that seemed so big was overcome just like in this world Jackie most trouble most things that we fear we forget the common sense and courage that God gave us we forget that God is on our side and God on our side is greater than all the challenges of this world God is with us in this Jackie you know your Bible it's good and simple Christianity for us to face realities for us to face wrongs for us to face injustice and overcome we can fight this together jackie because god is on our side you ever heard of the 95 percent rule of worry 95 percent about what we worry about never happens 95 percent of what we fear never comes to pass yet we spend our life not being bold like lions because of what we fear we have to confront that fear and then we have to nurture your mind that's the third step you have to nurture your mind you nurture your mind when you go to school you learn about subjects you learn about academic disciplines you you grow smart in that way that's not what I'm talking about what I'm talking about is making sure you understand that the borderline between Fear and courage is really a mental thing. And you have against you to feed your fears those people that tell you you can't and you won't. And sometimes people that are even the closest to you are the ones who say to you, you can't and you won't. And you need to remember the promises of God. You need to remember who's... Who's on your side? Proverbs 4.23 says, above all else, guard your heart. He's really saying guard your mind. They, in those times, they call the heart the, the core of a personality, but we know the personality comes from the mind today. Above all else, guard your mind, for everything you do flows from it. If you're going to be courageous, you have to guard that mind against the negative thoughts against the negative input what he's really saying here is censor the input uh, what that's what the scripture tells us you know i read to you earlier joshua 1 6 you need to see what follows it how do you nurture your mind how do you uh, con stay consistently strong and courageous well he tells us be strong and very courageous be careful to obey all the law my servant moses gave you in other words Remember the first five books of the, the Bible. Remember the truth of God's word. Fill your mind with the word. Do not turn from it to the right or to the left, that you may be successful wherever you go. You know that's true, right? You faithfully apply the lessons of Scripture 
you see and find success, don't you? Keep this book of the law always on your lips. Meditate on it day and night so that you may be careful to do everything written in it. Then you will be prosperous and successful. Those are promises. We seek to understand the word and apply it to obey it in our lives. Then success and prosperity come our way. Have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. See how they're linked? They're linked. The understanding and following the word is linked to being strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. For the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. If you memorize scripture, if you have it in your mind, God is always with you. The principles, the truth of God is always with you. And it begets courage. It births and continues, propagates courage within you. It is in your mind this battle between fear and courage that you have to overcome. Romans 12 says, Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. In other words, learn to think differently than the crowd. Learn to think differently than everybody else. Then you'll be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. God means for you in his will to not live in fear, but to be strong and courageous. Philippians gives us this reminder, finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. What's the implied message? If it's unlovely, if it's unbeautiful, if it's impure, don't think about those things. I say to you, if you have those naysayers, the best you can, put those negative thoughts out of your mind. Instead, focus on the truths, the promises of God, and you will be able to, I think, have a mind that's able to choose and sustain courage in your life. And lastly, the last step, the fourth step to facing your fears is cultivate your love for God, which I call the vaccine. Vaccine's on the mind of everybody today. The, the, way, the way to have courage, the way to face your fears, that final step is to grow your faith, your relationship with God. It says to us in 1 John 4, 18, there is no fear in love, but perfect love drives out fear. The perfect love is the love God has for you. Perfect love is the love you aspire to with him. Perfect love drives out fear because fear has to do with punishment. The one who fears is not made perfect in love. Cultivate, grow that love of God. Grow that relationship with God. How do you overcome your fears? Let me give you a three-step kind of practical process. This might sound like, uh, it might sound some like weird strategy, but I think it's exactly what God would have me say to you. First is you thank him. You thank God for the things that cause you fear. You thank God for the challenges that turn you toward him, that help you to see that you can't do it your way best. You need him. You need his direction. You need his help. You know, the thing I fear greatest or most is to have a stroke, is to have the ability to communicate, to, to be active, taken away from me. After all, I, what I do is communicate. So when I was told last fall I had high blood pressure, that scared me. But I have done what I'm telling you to do. I, I learned to thank God for that challenge because my diet got better. My personal habits got better. I feel better than I have in a long time. I'm not wiped out on Sunday afternoon like I used to be after preaching. I, and my blood pressure is under control. I thank God for that diagnosis. I thank God for that challenge of high blood pressure. You thank him for those problems and then you list the blessings that come out of those fears you list the the blessings that come out of facing those challenges you write them down you thank him for them and you 
understand them because then you can share them. You share the blessings. See, here's the thing. We all think that we are facing the fears that nobody else has ever faced. It's called the egocentric predicament. We think we only think this thing. Nobody else thinks it around us. Well, you've got brothers and sisters in this body around you who are struggling with the same fears. How do we become courageous? The best way we grow our faith in God, but then we realize we have a family to grow with. We have people to be courageous with. Courage begets courage. As we courageously face our fears together, we share those fears together. We share the comfort we get from God together. We share the energy we get from God together. Then we become stronger as a unit than we ever could be as individuals. See, that's what we're talking about here. You, you face those fears. You list them. You share them. Here's the action plan for this week. Name your fear. Be real with God. You know the fears. Write them down. Then actively confront those fears. Actively confront them. Choose to be a lamb or a lion. What would your life be like if fear didn't exist? That fear you listed. Those fears you wrote down. What would your life be like? It is possible. You need to know that. There's an old Italian proverb that says this. Better to spend one day as a lion than 100 years as a sheep. Better to spend one day as a lion than 100 years as a sheep. Better to spend one day with courageous faith in God than a whole lifetime cowering in fear. Actively confront them and know that you can do that with God's help. If you walk in the Lord, you can learn to live with courage. I see in this room a bunch of cubs, a bunch of lion cubs. The wicked flee, though no one pursues, but the righteous are bold as a lion. All of us can be courageous. All of us can roar like lions. Father, thank you for this assurance, this wisdom from Solomon. I thank you, Father, that we have come to this point. But maybe we realize we've been less than bold, less than courageous in different areas of our life. Maybe it's because our faith is not begun, or maybe our faith is not as strong as it can be. We can change that. Maybe it's because we have people that speak negativity into our life. Maybe our negative thoughts are our own. Father, I pray today we've seen this truth, that with you on our side, all things are possible. With you with us, who can be for against? Who can be, be can be against us, Father? I thank you that you give us this truth. As we fill our mind with your word, as we fill our mind with your promises, as we realize and become your sons and daughters, that you can make us courageous as lions. Pray today, Father, that you'll help us to choose courage and overcome fear. I pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. It's ministry time. As I've talked about, maybe you're searching spiritually. Maybe you're trying to figure it out. You want to come to faith. I think you need to ask questions, and maybe those questions you want to ask today. Tim and Lisa will be up here. Tim's one of our elders, chairman of our elders. He'll, uh, they will visit with you. You also can reach out to us online and uh, ask us about uh, what we call starting point, where I talk to you about how to become a Christian, uh, and I can set up a time to visit with you. You can reach out to us with all these different ways on the different platforms. But we want to help you in your spiritual journey, whether it's become a Christian, whether it's to <coughs> become a formal member of Northside, 
you know, whether it's for us to pray with you, uh, help you in that way, whatever. You let us know. We want, we're here to help you in that spiritual journey. Uh, we're excited about next week, uh, the Kids' Corner opening back up. We want to tell you we have had uh, lots of you sign up as volunteers, but uh, we've had some folks that would that were our faithful volunteers that aren't comfortable coming back yet, so we need more uh, to help us. So if you want to volunteer, check back with the Kids' Corner, call us in the office, and we can help you with that. But we're excited. Things are somewhat getting back to somewhat normal, and uh, we're going to continue to trust God in these crazy times, and we're going to continue to be courageous as a church. So uh, glad to have you with us today. I hope you have a blessed week. Let's stand. I'm going to pray for us. When I say amen, uh, you'll be dismissed, okay? Father, thank you for your love, uh, for your assurances, for your promises that um, we don't have to let fear control us, that we can have faith that overcomes fear. So, Father, my prayer and is to, for us to, to grow in our faith this week, for you to teach us, for you to grow us, for us to help each other and come alongside each other to help strengthen each other's faith. That's my prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. We'll see you later.